Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Thunderstruck, uh, a podcast dedicated to looking at the greatest matches of one Jushin, Thunder, Liger. Uh, each episode will feature uni- a unique and standalone guest uh, who will choose a Liger match that they love. There will be no repeat guests on this show, unlike Cruel Summer. And throughout the series, we'll cover various points of Liger's career, spanning a multitude of different eras and promotions. And uh, joining me on this first episode is the co-host of the Super J cast, which you can hear over at VoicesOfWrestling.com. He is also the man I have dubbed the leader of the Jushin Thunder Liger fan intelligentsia, Mr. Damon McDonald. Damon, how are you today? Ah, uh, what a day! I, I love that. I, I I need a business card to uh, have that printed on. It's, uh, I'm 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 in love with that. I'm great. I'm thrilled to be here. This is this is such a pleasure. Again, the uh, cruel summer was was a hit, and uh, you came up with this idea as well. And of course, I had to throw my hat in because. Yeah, Jushin Lager is my guy. Um, over, over, and above all the rest. And uh, with the retirement coming up, um, we get to pick a favorite match and talk about it. I mean, that's that's right in my wheelhouse. So, yeah, and you, it's always fun being here. So, yeah, my, the pleasure is all mine. Well, I mean, I when I thought of this idea, I thought who should be my first guest. And honestly, like I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Like seriously, like. It's got to be Damon because, like, when I listen to the Super J cast and the topic of Liger comes up, you just drop all this incredible in-depth knowledge about about him and like details of his matches, and you just gush profusely. You've met him several several times, and I felt well, he's the person who has the most passion for Liger that I know of. So it it, it was a like a no brainer to have you on the first episode of Thunderstruck here. I lo- I appreciate it. I mean, listen, I know. Th- that's the hard part for me is remembering the stuff like on the spot. Like Joel, be, you know, we have a listener question, and he wants to hear about a nineteen, you know, eighty seven match with Yamada, and you know, I'm like, I, <laughs> I kind of remember, but he wants to know about yeah. Car- Carrie Brown versus uh, he, <laughs> Flying Fuji Yamada in fucking Ed- Edmonton uh, in right. the uh, spring of nineteen eighty three or something like that, right? I'm like, I'm sure I have the match, but I'm sure I probably watched it once, uh, and many years have passed. But yeah, I mean, I, I, look, I, um, I'm pretty confident in saying that I, I can't say I, ha- I have every single match that he has ever wrestled that has aired anywhere. I can't say that. But I'm pretty confident in saying I have very, at the very least have the majority of his Japanese promotion, New Japan. Um, if he wrestled in, uh, you know, I don't know, fuck, uh, Wrestle One. If he wrestled in Noah. If he wrestled, you know, wherever. Shinoku Pro, Osaka uh, Pro, Giant yep. Gate. Yep. I mean, I probably have it. Um, Mexico. I have a lot of stuff. I can't say I have everything. I have a lot of the British stuff. I have a lot of the Calgary Stampede stuff, and then I have a lot of the pre liger gimmick stuff obviously from new japan and all so i have a vast collection uh but to say i i remember everything or have it very well cataloged i don't so that's where uh that's where i think people do better people just do better in cataloging and remembering better than me 100 uh, well I'll, I'll say i'm probably in the same boat as you as far as like cataloging stuff and just being organized about my own collection of like wrestling footage and the such but uh but Dave, before we get to the match that you pick and we're gonna save which match you picked i i this is the first episode it's so like i gotta give some background information on jushin thunder liger so like uh, and, and feel free to jump in during this short biography that i'm gonna try to just get through before we get to the match itself uh he was born Kichi Yamada on November 30th, uh, 1960, so, 1964. So as of this recording, he is 54 years old. He is the longest tenured member of the New Japan roster uh, from his debut in 1984 and up until his uh, eventual retirement in uh, January of uh, 2020. And we don't know which which day he's going to retire on officially. Like it's going to be the January 4th or the January 5th show. What's your guess about that, Damon? Uh, I was told the 5th. Um, so, um, nothing official, obviously, as of this recording, but I, a, a whisper, a word on the street, as we like to say on the Super J cast, uh, the fifth will be his final night. Wow. There you go. I'm sure you've mentioned this already over at the Super J cast. Uh, he has wrestled over 4,000 
matches. Damon, that's that's a pretty incredible amount of uh, you know matches that one would have in their career. Yeah, I mean, you, you figure just the, I mean, just a Liger gimmick from the start when he debuted in the Tokyo Dome um, to now. I mean, he's a staple on on every show and barring injuries and barring, you know, major tours that might not feature junior heavyweights. Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> he's seen it all. Like that's, what's the amazing part is that not only in the ring, but behind the scenes, like he's been through every movement and every, uh, kind of shift and, and period of time in new Japan. And like, like to me that, that, feels more interesting sometimes than even the stuff that goes on on camera is the stuff behind the scenes that he's been privy to. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he was given the gimmick of Jushin Liger in 1989, and a year later, uh, he added the uh, the middle name Thunder to that. Uh, he's been the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion a record 11 times. He's defeated Hiroshi Hase, Naoki Sano, Pegasus Kid, Norio Honaga uh, twice for that belt, uh, Ultimo Dragon, uh, Koji Kanemoto, Ultimo Dragon again, Shinjiro Otani, Kendo Kashin. And the, the the last title reign was a little wonky because it was in WCW during the Russo era. So he mm-hmm. lost it to Juventud Guerrera. He was supposed to win it back from Juvi, but Juventud Guerrera like, injured his arm. So instead he fought Psychosis for his last uh, you know, reign with the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. And he would lose the title for the last time to uh, Tatsuhiro. Uh, Kaiwa, one of the you know a guy who's not in New Japan anymore. He's over in Zero One now. Uh, he set the record for the longest reign with that title during his sixth reign at uh, 620 days, and he had five successful defenses with that title. Uh, he is also tied for the most best of the Super Juniors wins with Koji Kanemoto at three wins in 1992, 1994, and 2001. Uh, he's a six-time. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champion with Great Sasuke, El Samurai, Minoru Tanaka, Koji Kanemoto, Akira, and his last partner with that title, Tiger Mask 4. So six six title reigns with the junior t- tag titles with six uh, unique partners. It's I think that's pretty uh, noteworthy in itself. It's like most people would have, like, this is my partner and I'm going to win these titles a ton of times. I'm sure Ghetto and Jadoff won that thing the most, and but with each other only. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, and, it, and again, that kind of speaks volumes to how he, I don't know, I wouldn't say has has the ability to help elevate certain people, right? Um, that, that's it. That ty- those titles usually are a nice little stepping stone title for people. Um, do yeah, you have, look, it, do, sorry, do you do you have a favorite tag team partner, Jason Thunderliger? Oh, Christ. Um, hmm. I have a favorite. I never really thought about that. Um, hmm. For me, for me, I, there's like two people. Like the first one is El Samurai, um, and the second one would be uh, Wild Pegasus, Chris Benoit. You know, so it. You know, like they had a great chemistry as a, as opponents, but also as a tag team. Uh, so you know, they're they're just throwing that out there. So, anyways, uh, let's continue. He's a two-time winner of the Super J Cup in 1995 and 2000, and he was inducted into the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame in 1999. And uh, what do you know about his early life before he got into wrestling, Damon? Uh, you know, for me, he was I, – I, for some strange reason, I always like the opposite of what I am. Right. So uh, in all sports. So I gravitate toward the smaller – the uh, uh, quicker, the, the the fast. So a guy who can steal bases in baseball, that's my kind of guy. A guy who can skate faster than anybody else. Pavel Bure is my kind of guy. Um, so for, for me, with Liger, it it was a, just a natural kind of gravitation toward, okay, uh, this guy has something that connects with me. Um, I, I know for a fact that the man loves his fishing, Right, and he loves and he loves his Godzilla, um, and I, I and and for me, my dad loves loved, loved fishing, right? And who doesn't like Godzilla, right? So it was just a natural kind of gravitation to for me to to, to really kind of like a guy in the from cut from that cloth. Um, his pre wrestling days, 
I mean, I think everybody knows the stories of him wanting to be a pro wrestler more than anything else and being turned away multiple times because of his height and because of his size. Um, and then him going to Mexico and, and, and honing his craft in a way that was very unconventional for a Japanese citizen to explore pro wrestling, right? To pack up and to go and say, okay, well, um, if you're not going to take me, I'm going to go over here to, I'm going to, I'm going to make it work for me, you know, whether you want me or not. Um, uh, and to me, that's, that's pretty admirable, especially in a, in a time, you know, you're looking at very early eighties when, you know, how do you learn about that? Right. I mean, today you just pop on the internet and watch a couple of YouTube videos and be like, oh, okay, I could do that. You know, I, I could get used to that and, you know, whatever. But like, like if you're, you're in your teens and in your 20, early 20s and, you know, in the 80s and, oh, I'm just going to go to Mexico and learn pro wrestling, that, that takes a lot of balls to me. So that's another thing that we're kind of like, he was going to make it work whether, you know, it was going to happen from a New Japan dojo perspective or, or somewhere else. And, and that to me, speaks volumes as to the guts the guy has. I mean, it's amazing that, like, he wouldn't, he would never be accepted into the New Japan Dojo because of his height. And, like, he's been in that company for so long. He's probably, like, the one of the most popular stars in the history of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, one, one thing I found interesting, like, he was an amateur wrestler during his high school years, and he actually uh, had a match, an amateur wrestling match against... Uh, uh, Toshiaki Kawada in his senior year, which he, he lost in the finals of a national championship tournament too, one of the four pillars of heaven in, in all Japan for wrestling. So that's kind of like an interesting side note I found there. Uh, uh, you know what the funny thing is? So like you're saying he went to Mexico to do training because like, he wouldn't be accepted into the New Japan Dojo. It was during his time in Mexico, I think like he he was like starving or something like that. And he was in such bad straits that when New Japan officials would come to visit the their partners in Mexico, CMML. Like they they saw him and they took pity on him. They said, "Okay, God, like come come on back, come back to Japan. You, you can train in the dojo. You, you're you're working your your ass off here. It's you're, you're starving yourself. We we don't need to see that. We don't need that on our conscience. So come back." And you know he joined the class that included Shinya Hashimoto, Keiji Muto, mm-hmm. and Masahiro Chono. So what I think you know you can pick a better story as far as being like a professional wrestler, like go to Mexico, but come back. And then you're in the same class as the three musketeers, David. It's a good, it's a good learning, right? It's a good, good class to, uh, you know, to train with and to, and to, and to pick brains and, and to, uh, uh, grow as a pro wrestler. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, from a new Japan perspective, that if you could do the old brain dump into into a computer and just take all that knowledge, um, I, there's no one else that 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 to me, I mean, just from a year long, you know, a, a, a ten year perspective, that just has seen so much and has experienced so much and has has been through the highs and the lows of the company. Like to me, the, the, like he would be the most interesting guy to talk to. The the one day that he just kind of tears down all the walls and opens up about everything and writes the book, so to speak. Um, I think that would be the most interesting history lesson of of Japanese pro wrestling than that anyone could give. I know. Like, can you imagine if there was like an English biography of his career and like, you know, someone's got to go do that. Someone's got to get get on that and write the book about Jushin Thunder Liger's career life like from the time he debuted which was by the way in march of 1984 against a, a man named shinji kasuki who has no footnote in history outside of being the, the <laughs> you know the debut opponent of jushin thunder liger um just to finish off now, the- wait a minute did you wait, a minute, wait, wait did you know that there there is a jushin liger autobiography book i mean it's it's in english know, it's not a tell-all mind you no it's in japanese but i'm in it are you are, is I'm it in the book there's a picture of you in there me and him, it's a full page picture. It's a full page picture. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when, I, when I met him in, uh, in New York, I brought the book and I have a picture of me holding the book with, to that picture and him pointing, you know, it's kind of like this. We do this montage thing usually with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, the tattoos. But yeah, he has, a, he has a book. I have four copies of, of the, there's two books. It was broken into two books. Um, and the second book, there's a, there's a, full page picture of me and him pointing at my tattoo 
uh, and it's like crazy fam, <laughs> you know, eyes tattoo of Liger. <laughs> That's like the subtitle. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm in his uh, official autobiography. Yes. Well, you know, that makes this episode even better because who else am I going to get that's going to can say that they're in fucking Jushin Liger's autobiography? <laughs> Someone needs to translate that into English then. Yes. Uh, just a quick quick couple of more notes and then we'll get to the match. Uh, uh, during his career, he would do excursions to England for All-Star Wrestling and to Canada for Stampede Wrestling. And during his time in Calgary, he would train in the infamous Heart Dungeon. And I, I think around that time, we, we can safely say that probably he's like in the same class yeah, as like Chris Benoit, as maybe Brian Pillman, maybe uh, Beef Wellington, people like that. So, you know, like you can imagine like this guy's been like around some of the best in the early part of his career, both in Japan Probably in England. I would imagine maybe he's like doing matches and hanging out with like Regal and Finley in England and then over in, in, in Calgary, Benoit, like Pillman, uh, you know, and, and Beef Wellington, who's uh, kind of not so well known, but he was a pretty good hand over in uh, the Calgary days. Yeah, Calgary. I mean, they had, uh, you know, Owen Hart and Muck and Singh and uh, yeah, all the Hart brothers. And uh, I mean, I'm just trying to think of like. I mean, Hiroshi Hase did a tour there before, and they, they would just bring over this talent, and they had that exchange. I mean, back in the day, it was you know Dynamite Kid who who Liger you know wanted to be right. If you look look back at the uh, old Yamada stuff, I mean, the shaved head, the long tights, uh, the wrestling style, the very snappy style. I mean, he he wanted to be Dynamite Kid, and if I'm not mistaken. Um, one of his little nicknames was Dynamite or was a kid or something like that, where, you know, the people even recognize the fact that, you know, he's trying really hard to be the, the second coming. So, um, you know, Davey Boy Smith and just all that Calgary influence that was there at the time um, and that would be brought over for tours. He absorbed that like it was a sponge, uh, like he was a sponge um, and vice versa. Right. You know, a lot of the guys who worked those early 80s tours. Uh, Brett, uh, Dynamite, Davy Boy, and then later on Owen, and and you know, all those people, they took they took a lot of stuff from Japan and brought it back to Calgary. So, um, yeah, you know, one of my most prized possessions, WH, is um, I have an autograph. Uh, it's it's Yamada from Calgary. He's like on his knees at a babbling brook. And it's autographed Kichi Yamada, not Jushin. Wow, that's probably I might, like one of the few autographs out there of his real name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, I have a, an older magazine where he was he was was, and I was like, oh, you know, and but it was Yamada on the cover, but he signed it as Liger. <laughs> he signed it as Liger, like, which is understandable. But it's kind of like, oh, maybe he'll sign it as Yamada. Uh, but yeah, I have uh, it's actually it's, it's on my wall right now. Um, yeah, signed as as Yamada, which is uh, might be might be rare, might be rare. Who knows? Who knows? I I gotta think it's rare, Damon. I think you got like, you know, you got like fucking national treasure. Like Nicholas Cage is gonna come to your house <laughs> to steal that that thing or something like that. But uh, just as a as to round off his biography, like it, it's such an extensive career. But from this point, like he's he becomes like you know the Jason Thunder Liger. He's going to become the greatest junior heavyweight of all time that's and that's not hyperbole that's not like an opinion that's that's an undeniable fact that he is the greatest junior heavyweight of all time uh he becomes a booker in new japan for the junior division i think during their golden era in my opinion he you know he he organizes things like this the super j cup he organizes like the creation of the j crown which i'll talk about in other episodes um but and yeah and he's still like probably I'm going to say right now, probably in the top five most popular wrestlers in New Japan Pro Wrestling today. Yeah, and I and, I, and influ, the influence just goes on forever. I mean, anybody my age and even younger, just the influence that he's had on not only junior heavyweight pro wrestling, but pro wrestling in general. Um, he works a myriad of different styles, it feels like. It feels like you can, you can get in the ring and work with just about anybody um, and have a really good match. Mm, I, you know, the style, people talk about Tiger Mask breaking the mold in the 80s, and absolutely, I mean, without question, but I feel like Liger took that junior heavyweight mold and took it to a new level, and he, to me, he's the blueprint of what junior heavyweight should be and should aspire to be, and 
Um, and I think if you go down any roster of any promotion and you talk about junior heavyweights, I think Liger's at the top of the list. Yeah, I mean, he was able to, you know, parlay his size into a really great high flank sound. Then when, you know, injuries would catch up with him, he became actually one of the best technical wrestlers in in the world. I at some point I would I would rank him up there with like say Bret Hart as one of the best in-ring technicians on major stage in professional wrestling in the 90s. So it, it's an amazing career, which, you know, I, I'll, I'll look at each part of his career with the different guests I'm going to have on, on this series. But, you know, let, we should get to the match you picked, Damon. Uh, you, and please, please tell us, what is the match that you picked for, for us to talk about on the debut episode of Thunderstruck? Yeah, so uh, one of my favorite matches of all time. And if you, if you go through the history of, of my wrestling fandom, this might be my favorite match, and or you know maybe it's a match that means the most to me. Um, it's uh, Liger versus Sano, Naoki Sano. Uh, I believe it was in January thirty uh, first of nineteen ninety. Yes, um, and this match is uh, pretty infamous in the sense that people seem to remember it mostly. Uh, well, two reasons: one, Liger recaptures the junior heavyweight title, but. Uh, during the match, this is one of the first times Liger gets the mask ripped off and he's bloodied. Um, and uh, it's just one of those emotional battles that kind of brought me along their lot on the ride for uh, Jushin Liger. So, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, put it out there that I, I have never seen this match until recently to, to review it with you for this show. So for me, I was watching this. I was like, Jesus, well, like going through, and I'll go through the match itself in, in a couple of seconds, but it was just a real revelation. Like, wow, how intense this match was. And uh, just, just for, um, uh, for people wanting to look for this, it was on January 31st, 1990. It was from the uh, new Japan new spring gold series tour. And it was from Osaka uh, in the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium. Now people would know that as as Edeon Arena, but I still co- like to refer to it as the the old Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium. And as you were saying, Damon, he uh, now Kisano is the IWGP uh, Junior Heavyweight Champion at the time, and Liger is challenging for that belt. This, but now Kisano was the person who uh, beat Liger for his uh, during his first reign. He ended his first reign, so this is kind of like a rematch for that title. And uh, that's yeah, that's to set the stage for the review we're going to talk about. So let's get into the match itself. So uh, he lost the title to Sano on August 10th in 1989. Uh, so and this is like he gets the rematch on in 1990, uh, August th- uh, January 31st. Uh, both guys get good responses from the crowd as we open up the match on New Japan World. Uh, Sano extends his hand for a handshake, but Liger just slaps him really hard, and this really pisses Sano off right off the bat. The, the bell hasn't even rung yet, Damon. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Liger had to win, like, this mini tournament to, to even get this match. Um it, it, th- think of it maybe not as as severely as the redemption arc for like somebody like Okada, right? Where you know he has to kind of build his way up and and and, and become a top challenger again. Um, and and Sano was kind of a, a, a thorn in Liger's side for for a while. They traded the belt back and forth a little bit. Um, so this is kind of like. Liger's, I, I wouldn't say redemption, um, but to, to kind of prove that he's worthy and um, to kind of get him back into the game. So, yeah, he starts out hot. And, and I think there was always a little bit of, I wouldn't say a respect issue as the feud built. Um, but, yeah, it, it, I would categorize it more of Sano always being a thorn in Liger's side. Um, so yeah, that's, we start out the match hot flagger, just fist and fire, <laughs> kind of, kind of chain off on Sano to, to set the tone for the match. Yeah. So the, the ref has to hold Sano back and then he rings a bell and then Liger just immediately goes after Sano with a series of show type palm strikes. It looks really awesome. Uh, he sends Sano out to the floor with a spinning back kick and from the apron jumps on Sano, driving his ass and crotch into Sano's face. I can't think of a more humiliating uh, move to do to a person, J- Damon. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's, you're getting, get, getting a, a mouthful of, <laughs> of backside might not be the best way to spend an, an evening, yeah. but yes. Uh, it's, uh... So already the match has, has devolved into a wild brawl with Sano throwing Liger to the outside and throwing Liger to, into the guardrail and giving him a pile driver right on the floor. 
Uh, the crowd seems a bit shocked by all this. Like, they're like kind of gasping at this and just for happening during this match. Uh, Sato at some at Liger's mask. And there's what happens is that the, the crowd, a big Liger call, and the, you know, but Liger is, you know, like, you know, is, is uh, getting his ass kicked by Sato at this point in the match, David. Yeah. So for me, we, I, I didn't get tapes in chronological order by any stretch, right? So when, when, when I'm watching this match for the first time, keep in mind, I've, I've have Yamada matches, but for me, this is the, f- f- shockingly enough, this was the first time I finally got a tape with a Liger match in it. So this, for me, was the first time I'm seeing Yamada in the Liger gimmick, right? I had not seen the Tokyo Dome debut yet. I had not seen other Sano matches yet. I had not seen uh, him in in the gimmick, right? And I know that's kind of hard to believe, but understand, you know, this is 19, you know, by the time I'm finally seeing this match on videotape, it's probably mid 90s, mid probably mid 90s. Um, because again, it wasn't like you could just pop on a stream and watch it, right? It wasn't like you could just uh, go online and see the video. Like you had to wait for these fucking videotapes to come. Um, and you know, you, ha- you people might not have everything, right? So it's, I mean, it's like, it's like you're buying drugs for kind of. You know? It's like, and 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 when you find somebody that's really good and and dependable. You you try to stick with them, but again, it's about money. So all these tapes were twenty five, thirty bucks a pop, and it you know it wasn't easy. So for me, seeing Liger in the, in the in the in the outfit and and you know having that debut in my eyes for me was like wow, this is fucking rad. And then here we go. We start out hot, and again, it's nineteen ninety. You're not seeing this shit on American pro wrestling television, right? And the crowd and, and just what is going on. And then now we're getting into, holy shit, we're ripping off the dude's mask and we're seeing his face. And not only that, we're now adding an extra element of blood, right? So to me, my head is exploding with all that is going on, right? In, in what, the first five minutes? It's Liger debut, costume debut for me anyway. Blood, or, or, you know, big hot moves out of the gate. Hot crowd. Now we're ripping off a mask, and now we got blood. And the visual of of Liger with the blood and the mask just hanging on his head and the long black hair, like I said, for a, a, an 18-year-old, 19-year-old guy, I'm losing my shit. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you really start to notice, like, like what what's that on the on the mat? Oh shit, it's his blood stains. Oh god, Liger's bleeding at this point. So you know, like Sano continues his attack, and he's really focusing from this point on to really just try to add to the head trauma of Liger suffering that Liger is suffering from, like like getting. I think he got posted outside, right in the head, it, mm-hmm. and that's where the the. I think so. I think maybe this is a hard way cut. Maybe I, he could have played it. We don't know. Uh, there's a big superplex from Sano, which uh, elicits loud shrieks from a female fan. Like all I hear is this like high pitched shriek from probably in the first three rows, and it's, it's like, wow, okay, this 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 crowd is firmly invested to what what Sano is doing to Liger at this point. Uh, there that the superplex only elicits a two count. Uh, Liger's back at mask at this point is pretty much off. It's, it's, it's his face is fully exposed, but Damon, thankfully Liger has a backup mask, a crimson mask of his own blood to hide his identity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the visual, there's one camera shot where it's, again, it's just, like Liger has the 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 mask tied on in the back, and it's just like the front face is is ripped, but it's still hanging on on the side, so it's just kind of flapping there. And the blood, and again, the, just the black hair and the and the sweat, and and Liger just being pissed as hell at this point. Like he is, like if like watching it for the first time, and even rewatching it later, like you know, it's obviously it's it's you know he you know they. I'm sure they discussed this uh, happening, but the uh, it, the 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 visual of it, man, you it, it would lead you to believe that Liger had no idea this was happening, and he was just red hot, pissed off. Uh, 
and and to me, some of the the, the great Liger matches and great Liger moments is pissed off grumpy Liger. Fucking great. It's great. great. Uh, you know, like, so, you know, like, he's Jushin Thunder Liger, so, like, I, I would imagine that it's an open secret that he is Keiichi Yamada, because at one point, the play-by-play guy on the New Japan announce team just comes out and says, he's Keiichi Yamada. And I'm like, what the fuck? Right, right. What the fuck? Right. Like, if you were in Mexico, if you were the announcer of Mexico, you just reveal the guy's real name. It'd be like, dude, you are, you are done. You are done in this fucking business. But I guess it was an open secret. There, There's, like... It doesn't matter that like, we're saying like he is Kichi Yamada, like everyone knows that. Um, back to the match, uh, Sano whips Liger into the ropes and just straight kicks him in the chest. I like, oh fuck, that's gotta hurt. Uh, he applies a Boston Crab, but Liger is able to get to the rope. Uh, Sano gives him a sort of pedigree m- maneuver and drives his foot and knees into Liger's head from that point. So he's just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust him open. I'm gonna make him bleed more. I'm gonna try to give him a concussion. These are all and. It's, you know, it's a work, obviously, Damon, but it, it really feels like Sato's like really wanting to try to legit hurt him at this point, too. Yeah, I mean, you figure these type of matches, especially for junior heavyweights, certainly don't grow on trees, right? Mixing in the blood and the, the violence that is that is here. Again, we're not talking about a death match, mind you, but again, the legitimate, I mean, like there would be legitimate it, it, that that would feel a lot more like okay, it's a feud, but it's more of a a competitive feud in juniors, right? So it'll always be about the match and winning the match. This, to my recollection, was one of the first times where you really felt like this is a this has turned into a blood feud, right? This is this is a blow off match on a hot feud. Uh, it, it was the feeling. So I think I think it took. People back a little bit, and it helped make it stand out even more in my eyes. And at the time, uh, people watching pro wrestling. Like, this was a match that, if I'm not mistaken, this was an observer. I don't know if it was match of the year, but it was it was close. Um, it was in the running. And, um, yeah, this this helped make it stand out a little bit more. Well, I'll uh, I'll get a look, try to look that up while uh, we continue with the uh, the match itself. Um, from here, Liger is able to finally you know turn the tide of the match in his favor by catching Sano with a modified head scissors, and he follows up that up with a big drop kick that sends Sano to the ground outside of the ring. Uh, Liger uh, hits Sano with a tope con hilo that uh, sees uh, you know Liger's back hit not only Sano but the guardrail and a table at ringside. Fuck. That that looked like it fucking sucked, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> I always worry about that when they do dives outside and and, they hit, and, the, and legs hit guardrails, man. It just oh, it skeeves me out because I just like just getting a hit in the shin, like hitting your shin on the side of a table. You're just like ah, oh, I can't walk for three days, and that kind of shit just like oh god, it just looks like it hurts. That being said, it, it gets a big pop from the crowd. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. From there, he uh, Liger hits Sano with his tilt to a world backbreaker, and I gotta say, you know, no offense to Scott Steiner, but Liger's got the most beautiful tilt to world backbreaker in, in in wrestling history, Damian. I don't know how you feel about that. Love it. Yeah, yeah. It's compact. It's tight. It's uh. It's again. I use the word snappy a lot. It's very dynamite kid esque. Um, and again, this is a lot of this is pre injury Liger, right? So the body still hasn't been battered too bad, um, and the injuries haven't mounted yet. So a lot of the stuff you're seeing is again for the, for those people who um, need a, a, a North American reference. Think Bret Hart, right? Think Bret Hart before the injuries and that kind, or Dynamite Kid that snapness. To in Christmas to all of his moves, yeah. That the the tilt a world backbreaker is one of those things that kind of speaks to that. Uh, from there, uh, Liger goes for a surfboard attempt, but it's broken up by Sano raking Liger's eyes. Uh, Sano himself applies a wacky looking submission, but uh, he's not able to get a you know a submission from Liger. And this is like this is before tapping out, so like it would have to be a verbal like I give up, I give up at this point in, in wrestling in, you know, the, the era of wrestling that we're in, like t- tapping out, I think comes from, MMA. I think the, uh, MMA. And then I think, I think in pro wrestling it was like, wasn't, I think it was Taz who kind of popularized it in ECW. Yeah. 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 You're probably right. Um, yeah. But that was the time right around when, you know, e- uh, UFC was just kind of getting very popular. 
um, and not certainly not as popular as it is now, but you know, your Gracie's and your Ken Shamrocks and your Dan Severins and all those people uh, kind of launched UFC. Yeah, that's that's we're really where you started to see. And of course, look, I'm trying to think, did they tap in UWF? Was there tapping in UWF? I, you're asking the wrong person. I, I wouldn't be able to tell mm, you. I that. wonder. Uh, maybe we'll get someone like in uh, in the on Twitter like uh, sending me. Yes, they did the tapping in UWF. So you know, if I, if that if that, ha- if that happens, if someone like lets me know that, I'll put it up on Twitter. It doesn't matter. Uh, from here, where am I on my thing? So Sano then tries for a perfect plus. Uh, sorry, a perfect plex, a fisherman uh, with a cradle. And a German with a bridge, but neither can keep Liger down. He goes for a dragon suplex. Again, only a two count. Uh, from here, Liger whips Sano into the corner, who steps up the ropes and does a backflip over Liger. So he's showing like he's he has a, a great deal of agility and high-flying ability as well. Uh, but Liger is able to catch Sano with a glancing blow from a capo kick, but it's enough to keep Sano down. Uh, from here, Sano fires off a spitting savat kick. A uh, second one is uh, dodged by Liger, who ends up getting caught in uh, Sano's own tilt whirl. But uh, Liger then turns that into a head scissors, sending Sano to the outside again. So just this really amazing series of moves, counter moves, and these guys know each other really well, and they're 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 just like anticipating and, and countering each other's like signature moves here, Damon. Yeah, and again, keep in mind this is 1990, right? So, I mean, I, I don't think that this would, would have any problem taking that little segment, putting it into any match here in modern day pro wrestling. It would, I think it would fit just fine. Um, yeah, the, uh, I really felt like Naoki Sano was one of those guys that fell through the cracks um, in the history of not only New Japan pro wrestling, but pro wrestling like junior heavyweights. I thought he was so fucking good. I really loved him. Um, he, he just had a, a nice dick presence and I don't mean that in a, <laughs> like a, an asshole presence, maybe, you know, like he just, he just felt like a guy that was a, just a prick, but he could go. Um, and, and so it's weird. It's like he, he still wrestles to this day, which I, which to, to me is kind of amazing. Like he'll be on independent shows in Japan to this day, maybe not under the name Naoki Sano. I forget what, what, what the name he goes under, but uh, he goes under the name Takuma Sano now. Like, and he adopted that name when he joined Pro Wrestling Noah, and he was like, uh, you know, a tag team champion over there. I'm trying to remember who he regularly teamed up with in in, uh, in Pro Wrestling Noah. I'd have yeah. to look that up, but um, but yeah, he he had actually quite a, a notable career. As a wrestler in, in Noah in the early yep. days, Noah company. and uh, again that that SWS right, yeah, um, th- th- that was super. There was a lot of buzz around it. I mean, I hate to uh, hate to do the modern day comparison, but you know, in Japan, SWS was felt a lot like what we got going on here with AEW, right? Um, and if I'm not mistaken, wasn't S- the SWS the um, the eyeglass conglomerate? That, that's true. Yeah, the glasses. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the eyewear yeah. company like funded uh, Jinichiro Tenru's attempt to like you know uh, kind of go to head to head with his with his mentor, Giant Papa's All Japan for Wrestling. Uh, so by the way, so he was the regular tag team partner of one Yoshihiro Takayama, and they won the mm. uh, GHC Tag Team Champions uh, maybe a couple of times. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That's the the, uh, the 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 kind of the footnote about Sano's career. But back to the match. At this point, Liger, Damon Liger, is a bloody fucking mess, and I I would put hit I would put it at a solid six on the Muda scale of blood of of blade jobs. Yeah, that and again, keep in mind the, the where there is white, right? Uh, there is blood uh, on on the outfit, so on the chest. You know, there's blood stains on 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 the uh, the outfit, the gear. The mask is ripped. Again, the visual of it is just just stunning, right? It 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 is impactful. Um, the condition that Liger is in, the blade job, the hair, the sweat, the the white uh, being bloody, just. Just, it's just an awesome scene. It's like it's awesome pro wrestling. Yeah, so Sano sends Liger over the top rope to the floor. He then climbs to the top rope himself and dives onto Liger, who's 
on the floor. So he's not not a high fly flow like Tanahashi would do to someone in one of his big matches, but still impressive nonetheless. Uh, another superplex attempt is reversed in midair by Liger. Uh, from here, Liger, go- Liger goes for a power bomb, but Sano turns it into a Frankenstein duplex from Sano. Uh, but Liger gets his foot on the rope. Liger reverses a backdrop driver and gets a pin attempt, but only gets a two himself on Sano. Uh, Liger follows up with a German suplex, two count. Liger, he really, really wants to win, and not just of you know of a wrestling match, but like he legit, he, I want to fucking beat this guy. And I think a lot of it has to do with the whole you know tearing the mask and what, what his blood condition, Damon. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, the I, I think the, the the ripping of the mask took it to another level when it came to okay. We're trading the belt back and forth, but now it's turned into uh, all right. Now it, you know, not only gonna, uh, am I going to attempt to beat you, I'm going to beat your ass at the same time. Um, and Sano the same. Yeah, from here, uh, Sano flips out of a backdrop attempt. He goes for a Frankenstein, but Liger is able to catch him with a Liger bomb for a one and a two. A uh, big kick out. Uh, uh, there's a tombstone in the corner, and then Liger goes to the top. And what does he hit from here, Damon? Well, uh, it, th- this. For the first time, uh, Liger hits a shooting star press, um, and, which is pretty momentous in the sense that this is the first time, you know, now Yamada did it, you know, I think he debuted it in, I'm going to say 88, the shooting star press, um, and he would do it sporadically. But so the mask gripping, right? You see his face. So again, we're not going to to treat the fans like idiots and say, oh, it's not Yamada. It, okay, we're, it, we're looking at it right now. It's, it's Yamada. And even the, 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 again, announcers, play-by-play, mentioning Yamada. And to finish him off, and to put the exclamation point, to win the title, we're going to hit a move that Liger hasn't hit, but he's going to go back deep into his Yamada-ness, if we'll call it, and hit a shooting star press uh, to get the win. Of spectacular. Yeah, so he does hit the shooting star press and he gets the one, two, three, and he wins his second IWGP Junior Championship. And, and Damon, like, let, let's talk about the post match because this was really interesting. Like, I, like I said, I've never seen this match until now. And so then there's this whole issue where like Liger is fucking pissed. He throws the fucking title bat, belt at Sano. And he's yelling at him, and he just and he leaves without the belt. What's the backstory on this? <laughs> well, he was pissed. I mean, he was, he, it, you know, beating him meant more uh, than anything else. Now, in hindsight and, and with uh, history on our side, we can look back. If I'm not mistaken, that was the last time that they wrestled until, you know, the mid-90s when they brought him back to kind of revitalize that match and feud and kind of tug at the heartstring of, of nostalgia. But that was it. That was kind of like the exclamation point of, you, I beat you. Uh, I took the title back, and and you, you mf'er, you, you ripped my mask and you blooded me up. So you know, great that I won the title. Great that that, but but I beat you so bad that I don't know. It's kind of like doing the job and leaving the territory, sort of thing. Liger, you know, made sure it was an emphatic. I I not only was able to withstand your ass kicking, I kicked your ass and I got the belt back. Well, it was kind of like uh, presented to me by uh, Dylan Fox over at the Eastern Layer podcast that, that you know, like that the, the the ripping of the mask to that degree was not planned. So, he, like, like Liger was pissed that like he revealed that he was Kichi Yabata, and that the reason he hadn't done the like you were talking about the shooting star press, he he only he didn't do it as Liger until this match. That that's why it's like he wanted to kind of pretend that he wasn't like. <laughs> Keiichi Yamada, but then Sano ruined that potentially by like ripping his back to the point where like his face is fully revealed, and you can tell it's him, even with like all the blood on his face. So that that kind of like because that just seems like a shoot, you know what I mean? Like like him throwing the belt at him and just leaving without the belt just seems so unlike you know the the consummate professional that Liger has a reputation of being. Yeah, um, like, to me. I've heard both sides, right? So I've heard that that, you know, Liger didn't expect it or at least expect it to the degree that it occurred, right? Like there might have been a, a, a mask rip, but maybe he didn't know it was going to be as bad. But again, the blood kind of lends me to believe that uh, they had to have, you know, it had to be 
there had to be some understanding that because how are you going to see the blood if the mask is not ripped, right? Um, then the argument, okay, but the blood was hard way. But it just seems like a lot of dramatic pro wrestling to be involved for a lot of those things to have happen on the spot, right? Um, so, again, I, I, I'm, I've kind of subscribed to the camp of, yeah, he knew. He knew the mask was going to be ripped. Um, he, uh, maybe he didn't know it was going to be ripped to that degree. Um, but, yeah, I think, I, I think it was more of, a, more of an F you. Uh, you know, I beat you. You're done. I'm done with you. And, and, and I'm pissed for all of this, mind you, in a pro wrestling sense. I don't think uh, that Liger didn't know going in that that was going to occur. Right. Like it, it seems really odd that he wouldn't know like about the mask ripping, like, and like, I mean, the, the announcer, the thing that kills me is like the announcer calls him Kichi Yamada on right. TV. <laughs> and that, that he would know that, like, of course he's in the match and the guy's, he's not listening to the fucking broadcast, but I, it just, it's a really interesting, weird situation. Like for me to watch this, I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? But you know, that being said, an amazing match. Thank you so much for picking it. Like it was one of those things I always like. I gotta watch that match. I can watch that match. It's really famous. Never got around to it. But then, oh, you picked it, so I thought I gotta watch it. So I finally watched it, and I loved it. Thank you so much, Damon, for picking that. By the way, it did win match of the year uh, in the Wrestling Observer newsletter uh, in 1990. There you go. Right. Yeah. It's like I said to, to me. It just so much is involved in that match, and and again, it it was the match that brought Jushin Liger to me from to to from you know a Jushin Liger perspective was the first one I saw and to have all that those elements occur in in a match again keep in mind on a on a VHS tape in 1990 um it changed it changed everything it changed a lot for me um so yeah it had to be number one on my list and uh I appreciate you giving me this the space to to talk about it so I have a quick question then so this would predate like your ex- you you didn't see him in WCW in in like uh, 1991 then oh no I did I absolutely did so um in 91 obviously with the Pillman stuff and I saw him live in Baltimore and I saw him live at, at the Meadowlands um no I saw I saw him there I just didn't see this this match. This was what this this was January thirty first ninety, right? So I yes, would yeah. probably get this tape. <sighs> For some reason, I remember it being like at least spring, very early summer before I even saw this match. Um, so it was later. It it, it, it was it had to be months after seeing this match, so- and then. So it would be your first exposure of Liger in his natural setting of in New Japan Pro Wrestling then? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Now, again, I then I saw – because I think I had like four or five different Liger matches on one tape um, when I got this specific tape. So it would have to be this match, and it might have been the previous match as well, but it, was, it, it wasn't in chronological order. So for years, I thought – like it was like, I thought the second match that I saw, which was actually the second Sano Liger match where Sano won- wins, um, was the first match. Like so, like my chron- like for years, the, the 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 order of the matches is always screwed up in my head, um, and I thinking that the Liger match occurred first. Um, the, you know the the match that we're talking about here occurred first. So yeah, it, it like just. Having being a tape trader and and videotape trading was was you, you're not going to catch things in order and um you and you were hoping that you would get the match listings right because you would see guys and be like who is that and not know who it is until like months later when Dave would review it in the Observer so yeah being being a young fan in the nineties of Japanese pro wrestling was certainly a difficult task yeah I, I can relate to you Damon like I I think I've watched every like major you know, 1990s, all Japan, like, you know, you know, match involving like Masawa, Kobashi, Kawada, Tawe, Akiyama, the Stan Hansen, but in completely, you know, out of order fashion, like, oh, why, wait, right. why, like, Masawa and Kawada hate each other in that tape I saw like a month ago. Why the fuck are they teaming? Oh, this is before. Right. 
before they break up and, and form, like, you know, Masao would form his tag team with Kobashi, Kawada would form the Holy Demon Army with Tawe. And anyways, I don't want to get off on uh, all Japan tangent here. But yeah, so this was a great match. I urge people, please go watch this match. If you didn't watch it in preparation for this review, please go out and, and watch it. It's on New Japan World. I, I'm sure there's other places you can see it. I don't know. I only watch it on New Japan World. But uh, David, uh, before we leave, we're going to wrap the show up. Uh, please plug away. What Where can people find more Damon McDonald? Uh, well, well, we do uh, a weekly podcast, and it's called the uh, Super J Cast. And uh, I'm very proud of it. And um, plenty of listeners already. But if you haven't already, please give us a shot. Um, I think we're kind of fun. I think we're kind of entertaining. And I think uh, we make two hours of New Japan Pro Wrestling talk each and every week. Um, hopefully an in- enjoyable experience for everyone. So uh, that is where you can find me most. Uh, you can follow us on uh, Twitter. We're at the Super JCast. Um, usually it's my partner in crime, Joel Abraham, who's running the ship there. But uh, every once in a while we'll pop in. And we have a Discord um, where we talk pro wrestling. Um, New Japan, we have little channels dedicated to uh, other promotions, but the core of it is uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and you can talk with a lot of people who, a lot of smart people who join us um, in talking about New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, uh, yeah, those are the three places where you can find us. Hopefully, you give us a shot if you haven't already. Yeah, and just let me throw in the the endorsement for myself. I love Super J Cast uh, right away. I listened to that thing and uh, just always entered. So I don't want to date this 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 episode. I kind of want to make time, but like recently, some of the stuff like you've been talking about, really, for my taste, so funny about some of the people involved behind the scenes at New Japan for Wrestling. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. And then again, it's just such a thrill to be here. I love doing these shows with you. Um, again, a- anytime. To talk about anything, uh, I'm all in because I definitely enjoy this. I love the ideas of, of getting the pro wrestling community involved and talking about their favorite Liger match. It's, it's a, a soft spot in my heart. So great job by you. And uh, I, again, I really appreciate you letting me do this. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for being on the show. Please check Damon out over at uh, the CPJ cast at voicesofwrestling.com. My name is WH Park. For Damon, I'm going to bid everyone uh, farewell. And I'll see everyone on the next episode. Goodbye.